welcome everyone. We are um, going to be going through th this course material, and we are available for any questions that you might have. So why do we have risk-based thinking? We've talked a lot about risk-based monitoring. We know that ICH has updated and talked about quality management, including that risk-based approach from a sponsor perspective. But why do monitors, monitors into this when they have that risk-based monitoring? We want to make sure that we know that monitors are going out far more than, than we do as auditors. And wanting us to really think deeply about what are the risks that we are introducing when we are working within these, these studies, and what can we actually focus upon? What are the risks that we can control? And hopefully do so prospectively. So it's been my experience in a little while, even though that the FDA put out that risk-based monitoring guidance in August of 2013, the more recent monitoring plans that I have seen for review for, for audits have been going back to 100% source document verification. So even though the FDA has told us, hey, this is not working, we need to think of something else, not everyone is really buying into that process. So we're going to talk about how even if we are not following that necessarily that risk-based approach in our monitoring plans, we can think through these things in terms of what do I need to monitor, what's going to be critical. So we're going to talk about utilizing auditing techniques when we perform our monitoring tasks. We'll talk about proper monitoring, who is responsible for the conduct of proper monitoring. We'll talk about monitoring findings also within the context of regulatory and compliance risk. Look at standard monitoring report templates and discuss ways to adapt them to improve a compliance or develop a compliance assessment. Also discuss processes for discerning patterns in information that is reviewed. And we'll also explore methods for developing monitoring tools that facilitate a systems review and communication. So how are we disseminating our information in a way that's, that's value added and useful? Um, how do we make sure that we are adapting, prospectively adapting our tools to get the most information we, we can out of those encounters? So we have to first ask ourselves, what is an audit? Even though we're talking about that monitoring mindset, what is an audit? How is it different from a monitoring visit? An audit is a systematic and independent examination of trial-related activities and documents. So the key wording here is independent. Right? We're not part of operations. And it is systematic. We are going to be looking at systems. What is of note here is ICH in their definition has audits being more retrospective in nature. So we are coming at it from the were things done appropriately? Were things done in accordance with the regulatory requirements, the protocol, the SOP, good clinical practice as a whole? But what we have to think about is that we are using audits more and more now as tools for pre-qualification assessments in process, but we're still getting called more towards the end. So even though we're getting some headway in terms of being um, proactive in our approach and our risk assessment, we're really leaving it to monitors to go out and do that in-process stuff, what's happening in the day-to-day. -day. So quality assurance, that auditing, planned and, again, systematic actions, making sure that those are established to ensure that that trial is being conducted appropriately. This is different from monitoring because monitoring is overseeing the progress of a clinical trial and ensuring that it is being conducted appropriately. So it's really that in-process, day-to-day operational techniques and activities what is going on at the site level versus coming in maybe after all those subjects are enrolled? So quality control, as I mentioned, is operational techniques and activities undertaken within the quality assurance system. So when we are auditing, we are also assessing the monitoring. When we go to a clinical investigator site, we're looking at not just that clinical investigator, but the interaction with the sponsor, including the sponsor's representatives, and the interaction with the IRB. So quality control operates independently, but under the umbrella, if you will, of quality assurance. Both of these approaches are focused on compliance and conduct. How are things going day to day? Is everything being done appropriately? What happened? How did things function? How did these systems interact to get us where we hoped to be? Are we there or aren't we? So both are focused on compliance and conduct, but they use different approaches. Not just in the timing, because as I said, we are doing more pre-qualification and in-process audits, but in that focus. Where they come together is quality improvement. So quality improvement is a continuous process that identifies problems in a system, 
examines those solutions to those problems, and then regularly monitors with a small lowercase m the solutions for improvement. So we're both doing this when we go out and we audit and we monitor, but it's really, when you think about it, the definition of what those monitors are supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm.